Gerald Baker, this week on my 80s playlist, we're going to talk about Bucks Fears. Mm-hmm. Eurovision. Yes. Can we discuss the brilliant TV career? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of fanboy over you because I grew <laughs> up with all your TV shows. No, no and please do. I do love it. it. Roy Castle, everything. Polish me, polish oh, me. I right love then. it. I can't wait. <laughs> 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 I feel that I've grown up with you. This sounds weird, doesn't it? But you've always been there because, you know, I remember Bucks Fizz, but I remember mostly the TV programmes. Yes. You know, when I got in from school, yeah. uh, Record Breakers yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah. You were Ex part Baker of my... And, and I don't, you know, I realise that can age people when you say that, but you really were, you've been part of my, you know, my childhood, my growing up. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. That's all right. Just makes me feel really old. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's swerve <laughs> before you leave into your amazing songs. And top of the list this week is Luther Vandross. Yeah. Why have you picked this song? Which one is it? Um, uh, so amazing, funnily enough, because um, it's a song that I fell in love with my husband to. It was 1987 or 88. No, it was 87, definitely. And, um, and we were having this clandestine... Um, uh, relationship because I was already engaged to someone he was in a long term relationship but we fell in love mm. and this one song were, it was our song you know and it still is our song and it was really strange because I went to a party at Steve's house where his girlfriend was and my fiance was Ooh. and so amazing came on he, Steve had put I don't know Luther um, CD on as it was then and uh, and I thought oh this is our song and strangely, it wouldn't play, and I thought, eh, it's a, it's an omen. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it, uh, on our tenth anniversary, we had our vows renewed, and I walked down the aisle with my children, my twin daughters, as my, uh, as my bridesmaids, and I walked down the aisle to so amazing. So it's a precious song to me. How many years have you been together? 30 now. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, it's unheard of in this industry. It really it? is, isn't it? <laughs> wow. You look younger now than you did 30 years ago. Can I say that? I think that's something to do with your eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say your moisturiser, but OK. Um, Africa, Toto, huge, yeah. isn't it? When you think of this decade, don't you just... It's one of those songs you just go to. Yeah. I mean, there's no hidden story about it. It's just when you hear it on the radio... Dun, 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 dun. You go, oh, you go all mellow, and you have to listen to it. You have to crank up the the volume. Toto for me, the 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 production, the vocals, I just think are perfect. Um, and I love that you know learning lines like. Um, uh, I mean, who can get the Serengeti into a line of a song? But they did. <laughs> they did. And, <laughs> and so I just, it's just for me, just one of my favourite songs. And ever. apparently the thing that always blows my mind is this this was this was just a random song to close off that album, apparently, and they were nervous about sticking it on. I and didn't it was know a, that. Yeah, and it was a last-minute decision. And yet, uh, out of most of the 80s songs, it's just lived on, hasn't it? Yeah, it's carried absolutely. On over absolutely. Generations. It's timeless. Yeah. Timeless. It doesn't say 80s to me. It just says perfection. Perfect. Bucks Fizz. You were in another band before Bucks Fizz called Coco, yes, was it? Yes, I was. I was in uh, Coco for five years and uh, and I left in 1980. Thankfully, I left just at the time when the woman who put Bucks Fizz together was looking for, you know, artists to form a band. Um, and it was just perfect timing for me. When B- Bucks Fizz was put together, was that solely to be in the Eurovision? It was solely to be in the Song for Europe. Right. So with the hope that we would win and then go on to... To perform at the Eurovision, which we did, and we won easily. You know, we I think we got top marks from all but two of the of the um, uh, voting doodars. Um, so anyway, it was it was yeah, it was a perfect cake, if you like. And all it happens really quickly, didn't it? Within a year, like you formed the band. Oh no, within weeks. Wow. We wow. we met. I think it was the eleventh of January. We met, and exactly two months later, on the eleventh of March, we did the song for Europe. So in that time, in those two months, we'd recorded Making Your Mind Up, we'd sorted out the outfits, the rip-off skirt, and, and we'd sorted out the, the routine, we'd been choreographed, and you know, literally eight weeks later, we, we did the song for Europe. How did your life change? Oh, it changed completely. I wouldn't be talking to you now, the highlight of my career. I wouldn't <laughs> be talking to you now had it not been for winning the Eurovision Song Contest. When we did the Eurovision, it was only um, three weeks later, so we won the... Song for Europe on the 11th of March and the Eurovision was on the 4th of April. Maybe four weeks later, but anyway. Um, 
by the time we did the Eurovision, we were already number five in the charts. Yeah. So we had a top five hit already. Mm-hmm. Had we not won Eurovision, I don't know, maybe we'd have been dropped by the record label and that would have been that. But we won and uh, and I'm still working. I'm still gigging. I'm still ripping my skirt off. You are. <laughs> <laughs> and you look so happy and that's what I love you look like you're absolutely having a great time I love my life my husband tells me to cheer down <laughs> that's a good place to be isn't it <laughs> tell me about your next track uh, The Police Every Breath You Take uh, I am such a police fan and like in the late 70s they, they emerged and this they had an amazing look and that sound and his bass plan was phenomenal with his high voice and then we did um i think it was 82 we were at the what is now called the brits it used to then be called the british phonographic awards mm-hmm. and um and we won i think it was the best song award with um now those days are gone and they had an award as well and i had to go to the loo it was at the grove now the great room at the grove now and i was going up the stairs to go to the loo and coming down the stairs uh, was Sting and I stopped him and I said Sting congratulations on your award you, I think you're amazing and he went no congratulations to you you're amazing and I thought he doesn't really mean that but um, but it was it was my uh, my little moment of oh be still my beating heart because I thought he was um, he was fantastic and still is in fact they all are fantastic uh, tell me about Marvin Gaye's Sexual Healing a really special oh, song this isn't it it's just the sexiest song ever written isn't it I mean when you, you just want to be in someone's arms when you hear this song. That's that's the only reason I love it. And I said to my husband, every time it's on the radio, if we're driving somewhere, we always have the radio on. And if this comes on, I go, oh, Steve, this is the... Se-. He goes, oh, don't keep on. You always say this. I go, Maybe it is. It's the sexiest song that's ever been written. I just, and his voice. His voice. I love Marvin Gaye. I'm, I was distraught when he died, but... Even so, his back catalogue is just phenomenal. But this song just is just up there, you know, above all the others. I just think it's wonderful. With your with the records that you've requested today, that you've selected, that I think the one thing that they all have in common is they all sound really good now. All they've all managed, all the ones that you you like here have managed. They, they they've just stood the test of time. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if that's because it's my kind of I've got very eclectic taste mm-hmm. um, I, it's all about lyrics with me as well as the, the music and vocals I, I, and I love harmony I mean I'm a big harmony fan I, that's what I do it's, it's, that's my prowess if you like yeah. in, in fizz that's that's what I do best um, but but I just Marvin Gaye's voice uh, does it does it for me and so yeah I'm glad I'm glad you think that yeah. these, these songs they stand for very the much of time. it's going to be hard to pick which ones we're going to use but here we go then your next song is Peter Gabriel Sledgehammer now can I just jump in and say this reminds me of you because record breakers yep. and your massive television career because of course you did the Bucks Fizz thing extremely successful but when I was growing up you were on every t- television program you know like children's tea time and stuff yeah. record breakers I remember uh, can you tell me about working with Roy Castle and how oh. that happened yeah I was just I was asked I mean I, I started my television presenting career in 84 1984 still big days for Bucks Fizz we were still having hits and so um, uh, uh, but I, did, I really I liked talking and I, I liked being interviewed as I'm enjoying myself now with yeah. you and um and so I said to my manager, I'd really like to do a bit of presenting. And I was offered this this um, programme called How Dare You. And then I got onto London Weekend Television doing the six o'clock show. And I did some live Saturday morning shows with Mark Curry. And then I had the phone call from the BBC. Will you come down and have a meeting with Roy Castle and the exec producer uh, about possibly, you know, presenting Record Breakers with Roy? And I honestly, I was blooming really shaking I was so nervous it was a huge show wasn't he, it and he was a huge star yeah. you know he'd been on Broadway he'd been in movies he'd, he'd done everything and he'd broken every record in the book and yet he was absolutely blooming wonderful you know he made me feel completely at ease he taught me such a lot um, and so I've only got fantastic memories of Roy and of laughing with him and you know I've got he was a great man he was 
Everybody says to me, was he as nice as he appeared? He was. No, he wasn't actually. He was better. Right. He was fantastic. And I feel privileged to have had 11 years, well, eight years of the 11 that I did on Record Breakers. And it was eight years so working. sad what eventually happened, wasn't it? Was, it? How it did broke that, my heart. How did that affect you? Because you It absolutely broke my heart. And we did um, the very first show of the series without him. Um, we showed clips of him doing different things. And then the camera came back on us, me and Chris Agabusi, and I was just crying. I was just blubbing. How could I not? How could I not? He was just a force of nature and a wonderful person. And the last time I saw him alive was when I gave birth to my twins, and one of them was really poorly. She was in um, intensive care. And, um, and he came to see her. He came to see her when he was going through all the treatment for cancer. He was bloated, he was bald, he was really poorly. And I went, Roy, how are you? And he went, never mind me, I'm not the important one here. How's that baby? And that epitomises what Roy was like. It was never about him, it was always about you. Um, and so, dear Roy, you know, I talk about him practically every day. I feel like he's still with me. Bless you, brilliant story. And um, I've got to ask you as well, your significance, because that was about me. Why Peter Gabriel Sledgehammer for you? Um, i tell you why. I love it. I think I think it's a fantastic track, but it's the video. Yes. I still see the video. When I hear the song, I see the video. How did they do that? And it was it was so it was groundbreaking, wasn't yeah. it? And to be perfectly honest, I haven't really seen anything like it since. It even now, if I showed my kids, my kids are twenty eight now, if I showed that twenty eight years. Wow. Twenty eight years ago Roy Castle died. Can you believe that? <gasps> wow. 28 years old, my children, and if I show them that video, they go, how did they do that? It's astonishing. So I love the song, but and I love him, but it's the video that I see when I hear the song. Brilliant. I do love your next song, Soul to Soul, Back to Life, because this is kind of, uh, what, late 80s, isn't yeah, it? And yeah. And such a unique sound. Uh, tell me about this band. It, um... I knew nothing about them. Yeah, I, it was. I was really busy at the time. I was still busy bucks visiting, and I was seriously into TV. I was doing Saturday night TV by the late eighties, and 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 still doing record breakers and eggs and baker, and so much was going on. But this song just jumped out at me when I heard it. Her voice, and and the production of this song, I just thought it just was perfection. Back to life. I I loved the tone of her voice. And the, you know, the tempo, the beat to it, everything about it. I just think it's a great song. And again, it's not, it doesn't say 80s to me. It just says fantastic, brilliant music. Mm -hmm. And it's really stood, that has stood the test of time, hasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. brilliant. It must Absolutely have. Absolutely has. It must have inspired so many other acts. But that album, Club Classics, is just Wow, it still sounds really fresh now. I've, I haven't got the album. Have you not? I, no, no, no. The album's That's so the trouble. Cool. That's in that period of my life, music kind of. I, I was I was so crazy doing other stuff um, and being abroad and and working on TV and doing so much that music kind of was skipping by me. And this, but this one caught my eye. Just a single. I, I had no idea about the album. Yeah. I must ask you, so your life now, when you look back at the 80s, is it one big showbiz blur? <laughs> Because yeah. you were everywhere. You were doing everything. Yeah, if was. it wasn't Bucks Fears, it was Cheryl Baker on a television show, wasn't yeah, it? That's it what was. it seemed to me. And in the 90s, in the 90s, I was on telly six days a week presenting, which mm. is nuts and overkill, absolutely overkill. I mean, a lot of it was either children's stuff or early morning stuff. I did a programme called... Um, the really useful show, which was a daytime show at 11 o'clock. And I did a Sunday morning programme. So they weren't like, you know, prime time telly, but still, it was still overkill. I was on too much. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, t change a day a bit. I had a great time. Even in those days, you had to write your profession in your um, passport. And instead of writing musician, which I used to write, I used to, I wrote TV and uh, TV presenter. Yeah. Because I was doing so much more of that than I was singing. But anyway, it's all turned around and I'm singing again now, so that's all right. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that uh, in a moment. Should we do some Stevie Wonder? Oh, this is down on your list. I'm so he's, excited he's about this. He's the king. Tell me. He's the king. Stevie Wonder. Everybody has to have songs in the key of life and they have to have my, uh, uh, any, of his, any of his albums. Everybody should be 
should have to have them yeah. by law. Okay. It should, you know, so, so <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> punishable by, uh, yes, I don't know. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Master Blaster is just one that everybody knows, but um, I could have chosen anything because I just think he's... He is, I remember seeing him in the 60s, you know, I was... Very young, obviously, in those days. Well, I was going to ask you, have you met him? Have you seen yeah, him? I met him yeah. yeah, I met him. Was he on RCA? Because we were on RCA. I think I think it might have been at RCA. There was, they had this... Actually, the one song that I'm not keen on that he wrote and, and it went to number one, I think it was the fastest number one ever or something, was... Um, um, oh, what's the lovely one? Uh, isn't um, she... No, not Isn't She Lovely. Oh, I love that, that one. one. Okay. He wrote that about his baby. Um and he wrote about in, in his wife, what well, his wife at the time, Aisha, and all the, and I love things like that. But no, that was on Songs of the Key of Life, I think. It's the one <laughs> song that I don't like of his. And yet I was at this RCA do um, where we were congratulating him. Yeah. And and I was and I shook his hand, and I just, and, and you know he, I said congratulations. Um, I, I, I think it was I think I was representing Record Breakers. Right. Because it was a record breaking hit, um, and so I shook his hand and said how marvellous I thought he was and I, I tried to stop myself from licking his feet but I couldn't I had to do <laughs> it image. I didn't really but yeah I just I just to meet him and to see him in the flesh and to touch his hand and I just thought I touched the hand of an absolute musical genius amazing you'd always remember that wouldn't well, you I, I abso- I'll never forget it and seeing him for the very first time which I don't know if it was Top of the Pops or Ready Steady Go or whatever it was back in the 60s and seeing this little diminutive guy in a mo in a mohair suit with his glasses on singing uptight everything's all right and i thought then wow he's fantastic and my admiration for him just grew it never diminished it just grew i i adore him tell me about i'm just going to chuck this question in tell me about some of the other impressive people that you've met because you must have met you know all the you know the some of the legendary stars that we've lost now yeah Chuck some names at me. <laughs> I mean, George Michael. I mean, I- yeah, no, I've got photos of me and George. Yeah, yeah what at was top he of like? the pops. He was lovely. He was kind of thrilled to be with me, which was nuts. It's because Wham came after um, Bucks Fizz, yeah. so to him, Bucks Fizz was the stars, and and he was like the new boy, and he had a ma- a mop of hair. You know, it was before he looked much sleeker. He was yeah. still in his wham days. And this photo of, is, is of him kind of idolising me. Uh, I can't believe that, but yeah. Have you still got it? Yeah, of course I yeah, have. Amazing. Of course I have. Amazing. Yeah. Great yeah, stuff. Um, yeah, he was amazing, yeah. I've got a question uh, that my mum wanted me to ask you, and I've got to just quickly ask you. Yeah. What's the most impressive record breaker that you ever witnessed, you oh, know, on that wow. show? Well, it's really, it's the ones that have done extreme things, like um, the guy, I can't remember, his name was Rafe, or, but I can't remember his surname. Was it Rafe Fiennes, or is he an actor? Yeah, he's an actor. Okay, well, maybe it was him. But anyway, whoever it was, who did the North Pole and the South Pole, and we had him, it was, and also we had the Russian cosmonauts, who spent the longest time in space. We're talking about 80s and 90s yeah. here, so maybe maybe those records have been broken. But I liked the records of people that weren't famous um, but had done extraordinary things, mm. you know, things that nobody had ever done before. And that, talking to the Russian cosmonauts, you know, through an interpreter and the things that they had to do and how, you know, how they spent their time and... And also the uh, the guy that did the North and the South Pole, his, he brought his dog with him and it was slobbering all over the floor. <laughs> and at the BBC, they, they, they paint the floor every day, but that paint is just easy to wash off and everything. And so this slobber was just turning into this horrible uh, sort of <laughs> inky mess. Yes. And the poor, poor dog was covered in it. But, yeah, I so no one really interesting, to be perfectly honest, just nameless people that have done phenomenal things it sounds like a lot and it looked like a lot of fun it looked like you were having a great time you always had a smile on your face or you always have on telly why wouldn't you why wouldn't you you're dealing with people that have done something that possibly no one's ever done before I mean I I lose my breath now when I'm going up and down stairs we were at the um, CN Tower in Toronto and there was this crazy American guy who was going to he's probably still breaking records now he was going to pogo to the top of the CN Tower and he did it he pogoed i mean wow. could you if you and i pogoed <laughs> now we would we might be able to manage an three or four yeah exactly <laughs> how did he do that 
Yeah. It, honestly, some people do the most extraordinary things, and it means so much to them. And they don't, they don't do it for reward. They do it because they want to, because yeah. it's there to do. The human it's a spirit. record to be... Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. I know you're excited about this next track, Madness. Why have you picked this one? I just love Madness. I, I love that they are mad. I've seen <laughs> them live. Um, I've, I've worked with Suggs on his, when he's been doing television programmes, and he's a lovely guy. Um, but it's got to take me back to the 80s. My brother, my little brother who is now in his 60s. <laughs> <laughs> he was a crazy Madness fan. And so whenever I was with Gary, he would put Madness on and he would sing every word and he would do every move and all the dances. And, and I loved it. It just, it, they, it's happy music. It, you can't listen to any music from Madness and not smile. And anything that makes me smile has to be good because I think being happy is good. Can I add some, back, some behind the scenes gossip? So Cheryl's just swapped out Diana Ross for Squeeze. Yeah. Yeah. Di so, sorry, Diana. You just you were very close to yeah. being in the list, but uh... in the eighties, oh, we were given everything. We were given every album and every single ever that we ever wanted. Because mm -hmm. um, I don't know, it's like that they say that, don't they? The more you've got, the more you're given. And it was that. It was that in yes. the eighties. You know, we were given our um, Walkmans when they first came out <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. We were given a car. Who gives a car away? But anyway, um, but. Chris Difford, well, not, not just Chris, Glenn Tilbrook, the rest of Squeeze. I loved them. I loved their musicianship. I loved that they were London boys, South London boys. And uh, I went out and bought Labelled With Love. I literally went to Woolworths and took it off the shelf love and bought, bought Labelled With Love because I thought it was such a good song. But since then, come bringing up to the present day, mm. Chris Difford runs um, a writing camp um, and my daughter's been to it two or three times now, so and she's done really well. She's written with some amazing people, so um, it's great that they that they're giving back, if you like. Yeah. Um, that you know they've had amazing careers, um, and and they're giving back some somehow to new young songwriters. Have you still got the single mm. somewhere? Yeah, yeah. I've kept amazing. all of my vinyl. Amazing. Kept all my vinyl, amazing. thankfully. Yeah. Good. I mean, my my daughter. Yeah. I've got twins, but one of them is seriously into vinyl and stuff, and uh, she bought herself a little deck, and and uh, and she's thrilled that me and Steve have kept our vinyl. Probably some quite rare things there. Yes, yeah, stuff that I won't have played hardly at all. You know. Yeah. Great stuff. And like I say, a lot of stuff that I was given that I never played at all. Uh, so Cheryl, you're in the Fizz is now Bucks Fizz, is that right? Yeah, we Tell can't call ourselves Bucks Fizz because Why? because when I left, I was replaced, and I left in ninety three, December ninety three, and I was replaced, and the girl who replaced me registered the trademark Bucks Fizz, so that if anyone performed as Bucks Fizz afterwards, they could sue us, right? And, and they have threatened to. So, um, so we have to. It's me, Mike, and Jay from okay. the original lineup. So it's pretty much, you know, it's three quarters of the yeah, original lineup. Yeah. But we can't call ourselves Bucks Fizz. But someone who was in primary school when we won Eurovision can. I'm not bitter though. It's honestly, weird, I'm isn't not. It? This thing called life is odd, isn't it? It really is. Do you think that might change one day? I don't know. It's been like it for such a long time. Yeah. So I don't know. So tell me about the gigs you do now, because people have obviously, you must have a whole new generation of fans as well as the original. It's you know, lovely, Bucks actually. Yes. So tell me about your gigs. Well, what used to happen was our 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 audience when we won Eurovision was like the nine to thirteen year olds, I would say, and they used to be brought to gigs by their parents. Well, now. They're all like late forties, early fifties, and they still come with their parents, but they bring their own kids. So we've got three generations. It's I love it. That's amazing. We did a gig recently, and um, we did a meet and greet, and there was an eighteen-year-old boy from Canada, and he loves um, Eurovision, and because he loves Eurovision, he's done a bit of research, loved us, loved Bucks Fizz, saw that we're now performing as Fizz, and came over to see a Fizz gig. Ah. He's 18 from Canada. Amazing. I was astonished. Yeah. And really thrilled, actually. Can I ask you your opinions on Eurovision <gasps> and what happened this I year? I love it, Wasn't it special this year? Yeah. Tell was, me, what was your reaction to our success? It, I think that Sam Ryder just turned everything on its head, you know, because we'd all... I, I still loved it and I still said, no, 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 you know, come on, fly the flag, it's great, it's amazing. But everyone had been a bit 
passe about it and no you know we all we only get nil point what's the point what's the point and he came along like a ray of sunshine and made it good it made it okay to like Eurovision again and you know he, he had a fantastic song but with all those millions of followers he had on the socials he had an immediate audience and do you think that's what what mattered I think so yeah. I think that's what the difference was yeah and he went out to Europe and he was performing in 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 town squares and you know he went everywhere just to say here I am you know the UK we love Eurovision believe in me and he got all the votes he yeah said. And, and I think do you know what he said he said something when um unfortunately Ukraine couldn't host obviously and he said a line that I think was a stroke of genius he said it's their party but they're having it in our house I thought how wonderful is that yeah and I will be there. I will be there. We'll gig in the night before. Yeah. I'm free on the Saturday, so hopefully you'll see me somewhere in the audience or climbing on the stage or I don't know what, but I adore Eurovision and I owe my life to it. You know, winning Eurovision changed my life completely. Would it say so it would be quite emotional for you next Yeah, year? definitely, definitely. It'll be a bit strange because it will be presented by the Ukraine, rightly so, obviously. Yeah. Um, but the fact that it's in Liverpool, you know, the heart, the home of music... Yeah modern music maybe in the UK and uh, uh, yeah I, I think it's going to be a, an emotional roller coaster. So what do you think happened in the last kind of five ten years do you think the rest of Europe really did hate us or was it that we just goes weren't back, up for back, it? back further than that yeah I do I do I think um, it even goes back to the 80s when um, the wall came down and Europe suddenly grew much bigger um, but there was I think in a lot of people in those Eastern Bloc countries, I think that there was a lot of hatred for the West um, because that's what they'd been told. And it, it takes years and years for something like that to, to kind of diffuse. Um, and then I also think that they probably thought, no, you know what, the UK don't care about Eurovision, so we don't care about them. And also your Brexit, uh, you know, all the, all the mess about that, you know, they don't want to be in the EU, EU anymore. Let's kick them out. And then... Bless his heart, Sam Ryder. It all, Ryder. Changed. It all yeah. changed in one yeah. night. It was a magical night, wasn't Honestly, it? Honestly, he should have a halo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you introduce your final song? It's level forty-two. <gasps> oh. Which one are you on? Which one do you want to go for? I actually, I could play any, but this one I love. I just think it's his voice, Mark King. It, it, I mean, his bass playing is wow, and. Uh, and his voice is wow. And but the whole band, the whole band, uh, I just love Level Forty Two. And there's another band that back in the eighties I bought their albums. I I because I loved them so much and I still do. And I've met him several times uh, recently. And and I you know I say to him, I thought you were amazing. He goes, oh, oh thanks, Shell. And but I don't think he realises just how much I loved them yeah. and I still love them. Can I just say, we're going to go into this, but Cheryl, Cheryl Baker, it's been amazing to meet you, and it's <laughs> lovely. And, um, you know, the smile is real. Uh, you still look like you're so happy and having the time of your life. And you've obviously had just a brilliant life, but you deserve it. Good, th good things come to those, you know, those people who are good. I think positivity is a great thing. I think negativity can make bad things happen, and positivity can do the reverse, you know. Yeah. And, and so I'm a huge believer in... In putting smiles on people's faces. So, what are your tips for being successful then? I don't know, really. Being happy. I don't. Like, success isn't what it's all about. It's being happy in whatever you're doing. Like I'm, content. Yeah, content. Y yeah. If whatever, if you're a dustman, if you love your job, then then you're successful. So, uh, for me, uh, I I get paid to do my my hobby. Mm -hmm. I'm a lucky lucky girl. I've always been lucky. I really have. Where can we see you in the next few months? Have you got oh, gigs lined up? Yeah, we've got. Um, we do all the buttons 80s weekends. Brilliant. I hear fun. they're amazing. Have you never been? No. Oh, they're fantastic. You should go. I would you can't love have to. A, you can't have an 80s programme and not go to one of those. Okay. They're amazing. We're doing the Indigo at the O2 in March. Oh, nice. Okay. So that'll be a I nice I might come gig. along to that. Oh, yes, please do. I'd love to. Please love do. To. Do you think, here's another question for you randomly. I went to see Kim Wilde a couple of weeks ago and the Blow Monkeys last week. Um, do you think right now is a special time for the resurgence of 80s music? It seems to make people happy now with all the, I don't know, I just had a little gist that with everything that we've been through and everything that's so yeah. unsettled with the news people seem to be turning back to happier times does that make sense it does make sense and uh 
we've 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 re- uh, recorded a new album and it's just been released recently called Everything Under the Sun. And Mike Stock from Stock Aiken and Waterman, Mike Stock was our producer and wrote most of the songs. And he has used the old digital format the same because he wanted to recreate the sound of the 80s. Yeah. He's got all the new stuff. Obviously, he's got all the new stuff, you know. But he wanted to. He's brought sim drums in and mm-hmm. he's and all the all the keys and everything that they used to use back in the eighties to recreate the eighties sound. He's done a great job because I think it sounds really like it. It was made in the eighties. Sound the real thing. But I think it takes. It's a. It was a happy period for music. So I think that's why there's a resurgence now. How strange after all these years. Who'd have thought? Forty plus years and. Uh, and we're still loving because if you go back when we were big in the eighties, to go back forty years went back to nineteen forty. Which is it's, that's so isn't true, that isn't crazy? It? Yeah, yeah, isn't completely that completely different times? But it is eighties music. It's there's something special about it, and so uh, that it does give you that feel good factor. And I'm just thrilled that I was a part of it. What do you think of the Kate Bush thing this year <gasps> with Stranger Things? Thrilled for her. How fantastic was that? Just from being played on a on a big television series. That's amazing. Thrilled for her. Cheryl Baker, thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. Loved it. I really did. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Really appreciate it.